All right, I want to start today with, um, I'm going to do a little bit of this and then we're going to do a video clip. But you know, uh, does long suffering mean a long time? Oh, that's quite a question. The scripture we read this morning again from Psalm, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. That's a pretty, pretty long time. Uh, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the scepter of wickedness, that is the authority of wickedness, shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to, unto those that are be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. For as such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. May God bless the reading of his word. So we're looking at this, does long suffering mean suffering long? And today we want to look at the words, what words might mean or what they might not mean. Now it's funny because words are said that don't always mean what we think they mean, or we think they mean something more than they, 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 than they might mean. So I, how many of you have seen this? Uh, the, oh, we get to the buff, uh, buffet, oh, buffet, buffet, all you can eat, all you can eat. So does that mean that it's all you can eat? I remember when Alan Miriam had the uh, joys, and on Tuesday she had all the fish you could eat. So one guy used to come in there and get all the fish, but he took all this, the uh, crust off the fish and ordered more and more and more. But here's one that says, all you can eat, really? Lactose, gluten, nuts, MSG, soya, <laughs> is it all you can eat? Uh, and I like this, one. this is my favorite one. All you can eat buffet does not mean all day buffet. You know come stay four hours, you eat and you go home. <laughs> so, so it didn't actually mean you could stay there all day and eat. You know, there's, there's one there's one picture of a guy having a rest. He says he has to rest in between his uh, his plates. <laughs> so sometimes it doesn't always mean what, what we think it is. We're talking we've been talking about being rich, and here here is um, uh, Steve Jobs. You know, the creator of the phones. You know, everybody should know him. Um, Apple and. Uh, being the richest man in the cemetery doesn't, ma doesn't matter to me. Going to bed at night saying, I've done something wonderful, that's what matters to me. And he, he did not continue to live on. Steve Jobs' last words, he died a billionaire at 53 years of age of pancreatic cancer, and here's his last words on, the, on his sick, sick bed. I reached the pinnacle of success in the world, uh, business world. In other, others' eyes, my life was an epitome of success. However, aside from work, I have little joy. You can hire someone to drive a car for you, make money for you, but you cannot rent someone to carry the disease for you. Treat yourself well, cherish others. If the house we live in is square meters or square meters, the loneliness is still the same. Born in 1955 and died in 2011. And so he said, so I hope you understand that when you have friends or someone to talk to, this is true happiness. And Psalm 46 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very help in times of trouble. We can talk to him. He's always there. We're never alone. And when we invite Christ into our lives, that makes it even better because in the Old Testament, it said God dwelt among them, around about them, but he said in the New Testament, no longer when we invite God into our lives, no longer um, does he live around us, but the Holy Spirit comes to live within us. We're never alone. It's hard to remember sometimes, and I'm sure I'm, I've embarrassed the Holy Spirit a few times. Because uh, he's in there, but he doesn't go whack. It's not like a whack-a-mole boom, you know, like, like he loves us. And so we're not alone. And so we went on to, we, we, we begin to look at, at this whole thing of, of uh, what he was saying, James was saying about warn, warning to the rich oppressors. Now listen, you rich people weep and wail because the misery that you come to, you're coming to, your wealth is rotted and your moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you fail to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence, and you have fattened yourself in days of the days of slaughter. 
You have condemned and murdered the innocent ones who was not opposing you. And so when we look at this, we see that there's two kinds of things about greeting, holding on, or this hoarding. Trauma and unreserved live, un, unresolved living thoughts or feelings. It's estimated that one to two million people in North America are living in such so much clutter that they barely can walk through their homes or find a place to sit or a surface to place a place a plate. And so it's pretty 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 sad. Um, I knew of a, a, a fellow that uh, many years ago he. Um, he was an old farmer and he was kind of hanging on to everything, holding on to everything. And you know, he would cut off the mold on his pie and say, if, if, if you want a piece of pie, we'll just have to trim it a little bit, cut the mold off, and you can have a piece of pie. Um, but you know, the sad thing was, he didn't see a doctor for a minor problem and he died, leaving him probably half a million dollars. He could have lived uh, and um, one, one sixth of that, we, we knew about it because one sixth of that, uh, a third of one sixth of that came through our church and we were to give it to missions and three other church, two other churches. And so he gave a million, a hundred thousand dollars to missions. And, uh, but you know, he could have been living. He could have been living. But he was holding on to everything. And it's kind of hoarding. Uh, now James talks about what we have to understand in living specifically when others uh, have things that we think we like to have. He dealt with in the book of James, and you go through it, and you can go back online and, and follow all the messages through. This is number 18. He dealt with envy, jealousy, honoring the wealthy, favoritism forbidden. He talked about the two kinds of wisdom. Which kinds of wisdom were they? There was earthly wisdom, and there was heavenly wisdom. There was wisdom from above, or earthly wisdom. He talked about listening and doing and acting faith and deeds. And he talked about our conversation, our submission to the will of God. So James 1 and 2 and 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you get a Cadillac. We get a Lincoln, I mean Lincoln. <laughs> uh, they, the doctor said I have a slight cataract growing. I said I couldn't be because I drive a Lincoln. <laughs> That was a, that was a kind of, I am going to get glasses. You're going to see me in glasses. I'm going to start wearing glasses. And I'm going to get my eyelids. I think they're going to make them because they don't droop all the time. Because you, you, I know you think I'm going to sleep, but that's it. You know, but I'm not because I'm looking down and looking up. And anyways, my, Janet said, I, I really need to get them. So I think I qualify. Ladies have to pay for it, but I think I qualify for free. <laughs> oh, anyways. Uh, Consider it all pure joy when my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. Oh my goodness. Uh, because you know that the testing of your faith produces per perseverance. That perseverance finishes its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And he talked about wisdom. Uh, talk about, about trials. On, um, on Friday, I went into, I heard, I thought I heard water running down the basement. So I went into our furnace room. And sure enough, it was pouring out of the hot water tank. Down, the good thing is a hole in the floor can go down. And the hot water was draining down there. I've been down this road before, so. And I started to look at our tank. It's our tank that heats our floor in the basement in the, in the garage. And I looked at the tank, and it was, it was, it was uh, assembled in uh, November of 2016. So that's not too old. And I thought, well, oh, well. so I was with Dave Thavon on having, having coffee or something talking with them. Anyways, I was looking up, looking up, what does it cost? Well, they're about 600 and some dollars for, for, a, um, for a, a hot water tank. And I'm going like, oh man, I don't want to, um, but you know, I'm not, and then I found a real good deal at, at, at Lowe's and it was up for 400 something because it was a, it was a final and it was a clearance and you save. And I went, oh, this is good. I like that being Scottish. So I called and they says, but we don't have any. So now I'm going, oh, this is, I'm not having fun. So anyways, I called Loretta and I said, you know, can I get the bill for that? We get the bill for that. Uh, so she gave me the bill. So I took it in and, and, and I said that you got one year replacement and, and, um, and seven years, seven years warranty, a limited warranty. Anyways, I found out the limited warranty is that they're giving me new one. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, uh, we had a the big, the big hot water tank in the, in the, in the mats. It was uh, it was had a 12 year warranty and I and I, in the 11th year it started to leak 
And uh, all I do is pull it apart, take the damage, and they give me brand new because they didn't have any in, in rendered. But the, the, now I got this one, I got to take it back, and I couldn't get it in my car, and the van wouldn't start. And I got the red here, and I got with the van, and, and got there, and went out to start it again, and wouldn't start it again. But a nice lady gave me a boost, and I drove it home, and I, I don't know what it is. But problems come, trials come, and it's encountered all joy. Oh, I'm out there freezing, working on my battery, and count, it's hard to count a joy. Oh, I'm, I'm, ha, 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 I'm having fun. You having fun? And, um, and I did get it into the house and did get it down the stairs. And then I succumbed to my weaker self and asked Martin if he'd help me pull the old one out. I was going to try and get out of the basement myself, too. But the <laughs> I, uh, I hate bugging people. I hate asking people to do things. And I said, you know, and then these people say, you do too much. Well, I'm very thankful that I, I do know how to change a hot water tank. There's only uh, two. two uh, water connections and, and, and the one for the gas, it's, it's pretty easy. Anyways, but he says, count it all joy. Uh, chapter one, uh, we're reading, it says, and now we go on and says, once you've counted it joy, now he says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield to its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rain. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord is coming. Lord's coming is near. So trials and patience work together. You know, and, and um, trials work work patience. And it talks about uh, love. What's the love chapter say? Love is? Patient. Patient. Oh, my goodness. The word patience is in there 59 times. Patience. Rejoice and hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be consistent in prayer. Romans 12, 12, 12. So we're going to take a, that's as long as I'm going to go, okay? You like that? Okay. Now we're going <laughs> to, all right, um, go back to James. Does long suffering mean long time? It doesn't mean you can stay all day and eat, eat your all you can, all you can eat uh, Chinese uh, buffet. But uh, does long suffering long, mean a long time? Yes, it does. Now this is a video I want to, uh, we're going to show. And... Uh, I, I will, it's a, it, it's a sad, sad story, but it's, it's got a number of things in it. But, but, uh, but it's a miracle story, a miracle story, a story of angels. It's a true story. I just recorded this week, and uh, it will bless you. And but it will also challenge us on patience, because it took time, it took patience, and uh, we go through some of these things. There are things that will come, and I'm praying that people will come to the Lord through the things that come, uh, or they'll get mad at them. And, and not want to have anything to do with them. But our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust us in, in, on Christ. It says, the solid rock I stand. Um, on Christ, the solid rock we stand. And his, his, we stand on Christ by standing on the word of God. And singing songs of praise. Worshiping and praising because uh, when you're looking at other things, it's really hard to praise the Lord. And uh, when you're trying to get something mounted and... Uh, and you know, like uh, trying to get something working, but hey, the hot water tanks work and the floor is warm and it's nice. And you put that spray uh, soap on to make sure your, your, your connections are all good and you know, all the things you got to do. But, uh, um, and then, then if you really get stuck, you call for the Germans because they can come over. And they got the heater going properly in the gym now. <laughs> they put it in, but they, they, some of them are plumbers. And, and, and um, so I guess I should be a plumber if I'm a preacher, right? Uh, should uh, leave the plumbing to the plumbers. Anyways, I want us to watch this, and, and I know it's going to touch your heart, and it talks about forgiving. When you want to see healing, when you want to see God work, it talks about forgiving. Being patient means forgiving. Being impatient is trying to get what we, we have coming back. It, but being patient is forgiving. So we're going to go to the video video now, this time. And it's from Alex. Living Ward. Incredible, incredible, incredible. I have been, uh, I took professional counseling in college. I've been in counseling sessions. I have given counseling sessions. But I have met, never met anybody that is more effective, more anointed, and led by the Holy Spirit than this lady. And so many people we know and love that she and the Lord together have helped to make a tremendous yes. turnaround in their lives. Please join Joni as we welcome back from North Carolina, 
and Living Waters Ministry, Denise Boggs. Think is going to be so cold when you came to Dallas? I did not. I it's did not normally not. this way. It's, it's like it's yeah. 32 yeah. degrees right yeah. now, and folks. I'm shocked because it is forecast for Monday to be a low of five and a high of 19. Ice. So I've never seen it like this in Dallas. But let's get right into your story. First of all, before I say anything else, lest I forget. I am so uh, blessed by what you're doing and how you're helping so many people that I want to invest $25,000 into living ministry. Some people that come to see you may not be able to uh, give as much, and so we want to just make it a little easier, perhaps for some that could. All right, you've written this book. We're going to talk about called Healing and Restoring the Heart. And uh, this has to do with how the Lord uses you in inner healing. Yes. And uh, before we tell about your son's testimony, which is just so great, inner healing is something I believe that almost everybody needs, but that most people, they don't even know what that term means. They don't. Denise, what is inner healing? What's inner healing to me is it's a condition of the heart where there's some broken areas in your heart where someone that you opened your heart to, your mom, your dad, someone close, they did not, did not represent God's love to you and it broke your heart. It hurt and there was pain there. But maybe that pain was tucked away years ago, but the pain needs to come to the surface in order for your heart to be completely whole and, he and healed. And so it's a, um, you know, healing the heart is an amazing uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit because you don't know. You, you really don't even maybe recall the time that maybe grandma um, had a, a bad day and she said something that really hurt you and that has affected you all these years. Wow. You know, it's a, <clears throat> such an incredible teaching and Denise has agreed to come back and we're going to let her teach a, a whole session on this. It's incredible, but kind of the short version is that we all have stones in our heart. We do. And we don't even realize. And sometimes we look at <clears throat> the fruit that's manifesting in a person's life, and we somehow think that's the problem. Mm -hmm. When you have to get to the root, mm -hmm. and you have to get yes. to that stone that yes. was planted, yes. and that seed that was planted yes. long, long ago, yes. that turned into a stone. Into a stone. Yes. And pain that is not processed correctly through forgiveness, and when you're a child, you don't know how, then it hardens that area of the heart where, it, where that painful event happened, mm -hmm. then it hardens the heart, and it does, it creates a stone, and Jesus, in the front, one of the first parables he taught was about the stony heart, yeah. and that if you have stones in your heart, then the seed, the Word of God, cannot take root. And the Bible says that he will take out the stony heart yes. and put in a heart of flesh, so the yeah. Lord can do a heart transplant on us, yes. and many of us need it. Yes. So, Denise, without saying who, what? give us a, a few examples of what the Lord has helped you in living a water ministry to help people with. What kind of issues over the years? Well, over the years, we've had uh, couples that come that are at the point of divorce. Uh, maybe it's been a horrible affair, and the husband's heart is just broken. He says, I can never trust her again. And um, so in a situation like that, when someone has, you know, really uh, violated the marriage covenant, then the even counselors will say, well, you have every right yeah. to get a divorce. And if we want to take that right, we can. But God says, no, I will bring healing to your heart and restore trust. And that's what a heart of flesh is. The heart is restored to be able to trust again. So I know there's marriages. <clears throat> Many, many marriages that you've helped, and many even high profile yes. people in ministry yes. that have come there that we know personally that you've been a tremendous blessing to. But let's get to your story because everything that has happened in your life, mm -hmm. God has used yes. to bring about healing in other people's to lives, her to prepare her. Yes. Yeah, to prepare you. And this was huge because this 
is your 15-year-old son. So take us back to that day. That day, we were um, on a trip going, it was spring break, and we were traveling to Florida. And my son was 15 at the time, and he said, Mom, I want to find my purpose. And he had the Purpose Driven Life book in his hands, and he said, is it okay if I just read through it this week and find my purpose? Now, let me just comment, <laughs> brag on him, that 15-year-old, especially boys, would be reading a gospel-centered book like that. That's remarkable. I know. Young man. I know, and so I said, sure, well, go ahead and read it straight through. <clears throat> Two minutes later, we were hit by an 18-wheeler right where he was sitting, and he, it was reported that he was dead. And this picture right and here. And this uh, truck was estimated yes. to be going how fast? 65 miles an hour. Good gracious. So yes. your daughter was driving, and yes. there was a... a Y'all had pulled over to a fruit stand. Yes. yes. And um, there was another 18 wheeler that was sitting there, and the driver said, You can come yes. now. Yes. yes. So she thought it was clear. She did. The obviously, the truck driver thought it was yes. clear. Yes. And she, when she pulled out. Yes. But and the, the truck driver that w waved us out, the only thing that, that is troubling is he took off after we were hit and we was never found. So, but the, that we were hit, he hit the 18 wheeler that hit us did stop, of course. And so, um, we were... At what do you remember from that? Were you still conscious? Yes, yes. And so um, when you turned I, around and looked, what yeah, did you think? I saw the lights, it was dusk, and I saw the lights of the semi coming. I saw them. Oh. Yeah, I saw them coming. And um, so anyway, but when I came to, I was knocked unconscious as well. I came to, I could feel my daughter, she was driving. I could feel her, you know, you're coming out of, you know, you've been unconscious, so I could feel her, and I slowly looked over, and I saw her face and the blood everywhere, but I could not feel my son. And as a mother, you feel your children. And I knew he wasn't there. He was not there. And I slowly looked back, and of course, blood was pouring out of his ears, his eyes, his nose, his mouth, everything. And um, so his body was there, but he was not there. Yes, and I, then I went out again. Okay, and so apparently somebody called an yes. ambulance or yes. a Carefly helicopter. Yes. Or, well, yes. what happened? Yes. How long did it take to get him to the hospital? The, uh, the um, helicopter came. They said they'd never seen that that they arrived in two minutes, and um, they loaded him. Uh, they took him out of the car, did an emergency trach, and then loaded him in the helicopter, and he was gone within just a few minutes. And so um, I did not get to be reunited with him for. A, a short period of time because they took me by ambulance. And so um, the interesting, another miracle, you don't know this part, the ambulance, I mean, the helicopter was headed towards Gainesville, Florida, and a massive black cloud came up just all of a sudden, just a massive wall. They could not penetrate it. They had to turn and go back to Jacksonville. It was the only hospital in the southeast that had the capacity to drill a hole in his brain or in his skull and draw the fluid out, the only hospital. Wow. And so that made that helicopter much more readily oh, available. Yes. Because time was of the essence, and he had to just turn all the way. I mean, he had to just just reroute immediately and um, and go back to the other hospital, and so in in, in uh, um, Jacksonville, and uh, so that's where we, you know, we were. So you were there at the hospital yes. at some point, and you went in to see him. Mm -hmm. And yes. what did the doctor say? My husband and I went in to see him, but prior to uh, uh, my husband joining me, because he had not been traveling with us on the trip. And um, so when the doctor came out to tell me about the condition, he said, ma'am, um, I'll have to tell you, he's on a machine, but he's not alive. He's just being held oh, alive. Nice. And said, the brain sits on a stem. And he said, the amount of pressure, which was 2,000, 250,000 pounds of pressure, when it hit, the brain was disconnected from the stem. And he did his hand just like this. I mean, right in front of me, just like this. And I said, oh, can't you do something? He said, nothing can be done. Okay, so here you are, a mother and a woman of God. Yes. What did the mother think and feel? And then what did the woman of God Ooh, think? I love that. I love that. The mother, I felt like...
like someone had pushed me out of an airplane and I was dropping. I felt that when he did the, the motion. And, uh, but the woman of God, God brought in a woman of God. She was an African-American, strong, mighty woman of God. She was a chaplain. And she said, she stood up and she said, when he declared that, she said, but my God is a very present help and he yes. had trouble and he's here. When she said that, I felt the hand of God in midair catch me. And I was on solid ground again. So that was a word inducing. It was a word so inducing. So you didn't season. even tell the family what the doctor said. No. And no. immediately your assignment was what with the family, with him? God told me not to repeat what the doctor had said. He said, hold it. I said, okay. I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell anyone that this motion had been made and about the disconnect of the brain. And so the what did you do immediately? I know you went to Will's room. He looked up to all that. They're yeah. saying there's no brain activity. Yeah, 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 there's nothing. And so, but we began at that moment when we saw him, because I had that word in me, and uh, I began declaring, and then my husband as well, we began declaring 24-7 the word of God. 24-7, praying and declaring the word, praying to declaring the word. We did not stop. We just would tag team, and we did that for 40 days because he was in a coma 40 days. So 40 well, days. And also, wow. there was an MRI. I guess that was yes. done. Yes. How, how many days? It was the fourth day. On the third day, we saw a visual sign um, that there was something, that, that there was some life, a visual sign on the third day. And I got to give him that. preach. On yeah. The third on the third day. <laughs> yes, and yes. he told me, God, I heard God say, Revelation 21 5. I went and looked at it. I thought it was there would be no more tears, but that's verse 4. And 21 5 says, Behold, he who sits upon the throne says, I make all things new. Yes. When you, I mean, his word, his yeah. word. So we declared that on the fourth day then they came in and said we did another scan. and But we don't know what this, everything, you know, there's a lot of bleeding. There's still a lot of damage to the brain. But there's this line that where the brain connects to the stem. And we don't know what that fine line is. And that's when I said, I know what it is. So there God was already connected it. Yes, it was like somebody had sewed it sewed together. It together. And, that's, and that is it today. Even my son says, when he ministers, he says, if God can stitch my my brain back to my brain stem, he can do the same for you in whatever situation you have that's broken. Okay, so let me just this quickly. <laughs> What's remarkable about this, and many of you may know, brain cells are the only cells in the body that do not regenerate. I know. So this is an absolute <laughs> modern day medical miracle with yes. no explanation other yes. than God. Other than God. Okay, okay so no 40 other. days, mm -hmm. on the 40th day, what happened? He began to move and the first, and I tell people, even if it's a marriage crisis, I said you've got to watch for the tiny movement. On the fourth 40th day, his pinky moved. His pinky began to move. And so he, he began movement because he was paralyzed. He began to move a pinky. And um, he also began to speak. And But it was very, very, you know, just very simple. And there was something <clears throat> supernatural that happened. Yes, right before the 40th day. I said to him on that morning, I said, uh, well, God's going to give us another word for today. And, and so he's still in the coma. He hasn't spoken at all, done anything yet. And, and yeah, I mean, you're not going to believe this. Out of his mouth said, Ezekiel. I said, let's see what the word is for today. And he said, Ezekiel 6, uh, 16. I think that's what it was, Ezekiel. And I'm like, what? Six, six. And I go and look in my Bible. And so he said that clearly. clearly. He said it clearly. It's yeah. not like he said no. all three six. No. I mean, this is an obscure verse yeah. that most people don't even know. Yeah. What did that verse say? It says, I saw you lying in your blood. Now he's lying in his blood on the side of the road. And I said, Live. Yes. I said, Live. Hallelujah. Can you hear <laughs>
All right, so we don't have time to tell it all, but can we tell about the three angels? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. When we arrived at the trauma center, um, there was an African-American nurse that, that greeted us at the door. She escorted us to the room. She opened the door. It was a big, huge room with an oak tree on the outside, and every other room was these little bitty dark rooms. She said, I've been waiting on you, and I saved this room for you. Aww. So she ministered to us the entire time and even as escorted him. He was able to walk for the first time when he stepped out of the hospital after his coma was over. And uh, we went back a year later. They did not have a clue of who she was. They didn't know her name. They didn't mean that. And we described her. They you told her name. You said, yes, I told her name. We described her. Everything. We said, well, she helped us every single day. And then we began to think, wait a minute. How could she help us every day? Because, you know, normally nurses take days off. Yeah. But she had been there every day, speaking life into him, and she would call him Mr. William. So and what, was she the one who had the, the music, or was that another no, this one? is another one. Right. Okay. The second one, the second one, yeah, two more, two more yeah, two right. second okay. one was at midnight every night, a little African-American. Um, and, and I heard it was Black History, and I thought, I am going to declare, because God used yes. them. mop the floor and the whole time he's in there it's dark and he'd say I'm praying for you Mr. William he'd Aww. say it the same way nobody else called him Mr. William but they did those two so nice. and uh, so when we went back a year later we went to the maintenance department we asked to speak to him we wanted to thank him Nobody had ever seen him before. Wow. Yeah, and then the last uh, angel came in. She was all radiant. She was uh, dressed in white, beautiful blonde hair. And um, she walked up to his bed and she said, what's your son's favorite music? And I said, third day. And she said, okay. She pulled it out of her pocket and handed it to me. So a CD, a CD, a CD third day. A third day. Like how many yes. nurses yes. had in their pocket? And the, and the pocket. And it, yeah, a year or so later, my, my son said, Mom, where did we get this CD? This is my favorite CD. Yeah. And I don't remember us ever buying it. Where did they come from? I said, the angel of the Lord. And so oh. what's interesting is that it so surprised you that as she went out, you said... Oh, that's right, yes, because I went to run and thank her. She was gone. Incredible. And she never came back. Wow. I never saw her. Can we show her. some pictures <laughs> um, of William? It was, a, it was a long recovery. Yes. But he is today. Mm -hmm. um, that's during the recovery process. Yes, yes. So the day is as though it never happened. That's so right. Like, oh, yes. He's so what is this? Thing. He's graduating. That's when he graduated from Liberty University. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, let's go Liberty. on to the next yes. one. And yes. he's married? He's married to oh. her. Yes. If you can get to Living Waters Ministries, you need to do it. Yes. But if you can't, get the book, read it, yes. Uh, yes. study it, yes. pray over it, yes. and see what God will do in your life. But I wholeheartedly give you a un, uh, what's unrestrained, that's not the right word, but unrestrained <laughs> uh, uh, endorsement of what they do. Because it's been a blessing to Joni and me, to our family, to many friends and colleagues in the ministry, I can vouch for what God does through this way. Well, continue to call if you need prayer today. Then when you hear a testimony like that, there's just faith that comes in your heart about things you've been believing God for. And God's saying, you know what? I'm no respect to your persons. What I did to Denise is supernatural. Yours is a totally different situation. But I want to move in your life today. So go to yes. the phone right now. Amen. Rachel and Josh are standing by right after uh, we hear from the kids. Jimmy Evans is going to be here. But Rachel and Josh, part of the healing process for Will after he came out of the coma is she had to walk him through forgiveness. Oh, yes. For forgiving um, his sister for pulling out, for forgiving the father who he had begged, you know, to come on, but the dad had to on work the vacation. On, the, on the spring break. And every time he would work through that. And the truck driver. The and the truck the driver. Every time that stone in his heart was dealt with, um, he was able to move another part of his body. And, Whoa. I mean, the fact that he's completely whole today is... It's nothing short of a miracle. So I'm saying all that to say, as I know you have a lot to say about this, how important is it 
that we walk in forgiveness every day because we're going to be offended every day. The enemy's going to try to offend us. You know, the God, you know, Jesus told us how to pray the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. And when he finished teaching how to pray that prayer, he only repeated one part of it. If you forgive the sins of others, my Heavenly Father will forgive you your sins. But if you will not forgive the sins of others, my Heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. God will give us as much grace as we'll give away. Okay? My sins put Jesus on the cross. And one of the ways that we justify unforgiveness is we demonize people. You idiot, you jerk, you witch, you, you know, we call names, we put labels. When you put labels on a person, it devalues them and it gives you permission to hate them or mistreat them. Mm. But God loves that person as much as he loves you. Okay, Jesus hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so he, even the people that put him on the cross, he forgave. And there was a guy one time that I hated a lot, really, really hated. And um, I, he had done a lot of damage to me. Is that you get early in your pastoring? Mm -hmm. I remember you telling me about this guy. I just hated it. <laughs> and I had a little torture chamber in my heart, and I drug him down there and beat him up about 85 times a day. And I literally just wanted to see his obituary in color. And, uh, oh, and just, I mean, it just, I just hated this guy. And so Karen told me one day, she said, your personality is changing. It doesn't matter who I'm uh, unforgiving toward. It affects the people around me the most. It can be a parent that's been dead for 30 years. But the, but the poison that's in there will come out to the people around us. And Karen told me, she said, um, your personality is changing. Maybe you need to get, you deal with this. So I was praying one morning about it in... I just thought the guy was the problem. I mean, honestly, I just thought, you know, and I said, I'm, I'm just being honest. I said, Lord, remember Ananias and Sapphira? You killed him. You know, maybe we're just like a funeral away from a Bible here. Just kill the guy. So um, the Lord said, um, I want you to bless him. Now, that's not what you were wanting to hear, was oh, it? Oh, <laughs> uh, But Luke 6, 28 says, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spy for you. So I thought, no. I'm not blessing him. I thought, Lord, if, if I pray a blessing on him and you bless him now, I'm going to be mad at you. I, I don't want you to bless him. I want you to kill him. And, but the Lord never says, you know, Jimmy, you're right. And uh, so, <laughs> so he said, you bless him. So I prayed a prayer, had my fingers crossed, didn't mean it. I said, Lord, bless him. And I said, every day. Every day you pray for him the way you pray for yourself. And I just thought, that's just... I mean, it's right all over me. And so I did, just out of obedience. Didn't mean it, you know, and... I've been praying for about 10 days, uh, blessing for he and his family and everything. And uh, on the 10th day, I had a vision. And I was praying, and I saw a little boy standing out in the field. And something, and I knew when I saw this little boy that something horrible had happened to this little boy. Horrible had happened to him. Maybe just like traumatized, standing by himself out in the field. And um, the Lord said, that's him. That's the man you hate. And um, something happened to him as a boy that caused him to be the way he is now. He said, you see, you see him for what he did to you, but I see him for what was done to him. Wow. And the bitterness in my heart turned to love and compassion. You know how you hear a person's name, your blood pressure goes up? Yeah. And I would hear his name. and I would The stones go, were dislodging in your heart against him, weren't they? From that, I just felt sorry for him. I, mean, I, I felt compassion. And see... The thing is, the only thing I know about people is what they've done to me that I don't like. Jesus knows how they were raised, the abuse that they went through, uh, issues they're dealing And it's not to, not to justify what they've done. But he and Jesus hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They didn't know what they were doing. They had no idea what they were doing. He gave the reason he was forgiving them. And so regardless of who I'm mad at, see, uh, forgiveness doesn't make them right. It just makes me free. And so when I forgive a person, I'm not excusing what they've done. But the other thing is this. Forgiveness is the most self-loving thing you'll ever do. But yes. the poison of unforgiveness damages the vessel it's stored in worse than anything you can spit it on. So God did not design us to be a repository for anger and unforgiveness. A lot of health problems are caused by unforgiveness. A lot yes. of you know, all kinds of problems. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing... So that's the uh, second part there. It really is. Um, it really speaks to us today. We all have to go through that at times in forgiving. And so I want to close our service this morning because what this also shows is the um, the disaster in the states, the impeachment and all that. It, it it comes back to unforgiveness. A bunch of angry, angry people. 
And so if we have to forgive, we can, we can pray that they can forgive one another. Both parties have to forgive one another. And we see it everywhere we go. These things can happen. And forgiveness poisons us. Unforgiveness poisons us. Forgiveness sets us free and it frees them. So I hope this, uh, you see the miracles can happen, and they will happen, and they, will, and they do happen. But this young man had to, it was amazing that every time he forgave one more person, parts of it, he could start to walk again and do different things. And, uh, and I, I believe that God wants us to understand that. And he, like he said, that's the only part of the, the prayer that Jesus said, he repeated. Father, we thank you this morning for the message of hope and for this young man and, and uh, uh, you're saving his life and restoring him and for the angels that came around and, and for people and Lord, for him being willing to forgive. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, Jimmy Evans and, and his testimony. And Lord, it speaks to all of us. There are things in life where we won't feel like forgiving. But Lord, it's not a matter of feelings, it's a matter of choice. And so Lord, today we just thank you for forgiving us. And we ask you to help us to forgive others. If someone has caused harm and hurt, and uh, if we're carrying feelings, and if when the name is mentioned, we start to turn red and get upset, we, Lord, help us to forgive, to bless them, because we do not know what they've come through. And Lord, we pray for our, our province, our country, and for North America, Lord. We pray for people to walk in forgiveness and um, to let the anger go. And let the, um, it said to be quick to listen. We read it in James and so to speak. And Lord, help people to come back to that. And for all of us, it starts with us. And now may your blessing, your grace, your peace be upon us. Thank you for the cleansing you make into our hearts and lives. And as we let the past go, Lord, we are able to move on. And Father, we just thank you for the victory and the victory of these uh, stories that we've heard today. Lord, testimonies. And uh, God, we know there'll be more testimonies. As we uh, learn to walk in your word in praise and worship and uh, and looking to you for the as, as our hope. You're our solution. So we thank you for that, that you're there. A very present help in time of trouble. And that we're never alone because your spirit lives within us. Bless us now as in this time of uh, communion, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is that good?